Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today, we're going to be looking into how to fix Arsenal transfers, players, formations and tactics. Of course, I want you guys to get in the comments below and tell me how you would fix Arsenal Football Club. Let's dive into the video. What is next season? How do Arsenal get better? How do they elevate themselves? Arsenal currently sitting ninth in the Premier League, but how do they get better? What's next? What do Arsenal need to do to get back to being a top four side with aspirations of winning the league? I think that's something that we've got to talk about. Um, so let's talk, let's talk, look at stats first and foremost. Uh, Arsenal have got the seventh best uh, attacking um, rate in the Premier League by expected goals and the sixth best defensive side. But I think the thing with Arsenal is it's you know a culmination of, of too many errors, but also a lack of performance from certain individuals that you kind of expect uh, to get a higher level out of. Um, you know, when we look at Arsenal's squad, there's talent in there. There really is, uh, you know, Odegaard coming in on loan. Um, you know, the first 11 is, is reasonably good, but I still think there is a little bit of an issue. Um, and first and foremost, I think in terms of recruitment, what happens next for Arsenal? That is a big thing. Like, I do think Mikel Arteta is the right man in terms of tactics. There's stuff in his tactics that I really like. The 4-2-3-1 that he's got is reasonably good. The press is quite good. If the players are on point, I think you've got a decent side there. But at the same time, the lack of performance in the Europa League, does that fall on Arteta? Does that fall on individuals? It falls on pretty much both of them, I think. And they need to go back to the recruitment, I think, of, of what worked out previously. That is signing young, talented players, your Omri's, your Vieira's, your Robin Van Persie's, players that either haven't like made the cut somewhere and want a revival in their career, like an Overmars, or a youngster, like an Anelka, you know, players that can develop at Arsenal. That's one of the big things why Man United have been so successful in the Premier League. The amount of development of young players within United is incredible. And why Arsenal was so good is because of that as well. When you look at the players coming through, Arsenal fans should be super excited about Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe is a brilliant little footballer, pressing superbly, great work rate, uh, great ability in and around the box, silky little player. And of course, Saka, you know, another player that's kind of carrying Arsenal forward uh, and flying. I think it's about bringing players like that in and developing that with talent that they bring in for, uh, from abroad. But not talent like a, you know, a Nicolas Pepe level talent that seems to be a little bit overpriced. You know, it was obviously before everything went to went to pot in the world, but doesn't seem like good recruitment. And, and as well, I think recruitment is the issue. I'd say it's not coaching at the moment. When you look at, for example, their right wing position, that they've had, uh, you know, they, they they already had Saka coming through the academy. They could have seen him as that solution. But you're thinking Nicolas Pepe was spent a lot of money, money by, buying Nicolas Pepe from Lille, over £70 million. And also Willian, you know, Willian, a player that's on a massive contract, that would have had a massive buyout. It seems like that, all three of those players are probably best suited to play on the right-hand side. And that's kind of an issue that the squad that they're building is very, very lopsided in a sense. Uh, when you take a look at Willian, um, Clearly not a bad signing, but his creative output is what you'd say lukewarm. His goal scoring is even worse. A single goal in 25 games um, and isn't even in the top 50 in the Premier League this season for chances created. For a player that you perceive to be a creator that could come in and do something, that's pretty poor. Then when you look at Nicolas Pepe, big, big talent, but Arsenal massively overpaid. They got properly, properly done over by Lille in this environment. And Lucas, uh, Lewis Campos, someone that they could get. Um, if they really wanted to do it. You know, you offer him enough, maybe you'd turn down Real Madrid. But yeah, the Ivorian has uh, failed to recapture his sort of progressive form uh, that he had in Lyon. I think we forget how good he, he was. Like he, he had an unbelievable year. Um, his last year was, was simply sensational uh, from Nicolas Pepe. And I generally don't think stats don't tra translate too badly from Liga. You know, there's a lot of examples of players that have moved from Liga in recent years that the stats have worked. And if we take a look at his heat map um, for Lille that season, very right-hand sided, very, very commanding in there, looking really good. Um, and you take 22 goals in 38 games, 11 assists, directly involved in 33 goals in 38 games. You've not got a bad player there. Uh, 3.1 shots per game, 1.8 key passes. You're nearly looking at five shots added to the attack per game. This guy is not a bad player. Uh, when we take a look at his, his, his Premier League season from this year, Hasn't translated to goals. Six goals and assists in 27 games. But if 
we look at his non-penalty XG plus XA per 90, it's at 0.4, which isn't too bad. That's quite good, but we're just not seeing it. We're really not seeing it. And I think that's something that you've got to look at as another player that's been recruited that hasn't done it. Where does he go next season? Where does he play? Um, for Arsenal, like, you know, if I'm even here, you would maybe even throw him as a forward. Maybe play him as a striker. See what he can do there. He did a lot of his good work for Lille playing last man, playing last line. Could be a solution for it. Obviously, Sack has been the guy that we spoke about. that has been absolutely sensational. Could play right-hand side, left-hand side. Could play left-back. Could probably play right-back. Could probably play attack in midfield. He's the guy that Arsenal need to build be, build their, their team around. And maybe the right-hand side right now, um, you know, is the guy. Mentioned before, Emil Smith-Rowe and how wonderful he is as a bit of a second striker. But Presser, defensively absolutely outstanding. Uh, statistically, one of Arsenal's tidiest players and one of that most hardworking in terms of pressing. But also in terms of uh, big chances, he's created them at a bigger rate than any of Arsenal's current number 10s at the club, including Martin Odegaard. Odegaard doesn't look like he's going to be staying at Arsenal. So in terms of we, you know, speaking about Arsenal, what do they do for next season? How do they fix this mess in the summer? Odegaard's probably not there. You know, Zizou and Madrid really need him. So maybe it is now time to focus on Smith Rowe as that number 10, that kind of second striker type vibe. But very much um, Florian uh, Balogun as well, the, the striker that's re-signed, maybe get him through the middle as well. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting one. Players that, you know, we kind of looking at potentially that could come in uh, and obviously help Arsenal. Obviously, we're on screen right now. Uh, Bemiang's still there. Again, another really bad, bad bit of business offering him all that money um, to keep him at the club. Similar with William, doesn't make any sense. Um, Saliba obviously comes back from um, Saint-Etienne, uh, not Saint-Etienne, sorry, he was at Saint-Etienne previously, from Nice, after having a pretty good run in the team at Nice. I think that could be something where there's talent there. Arsenal, when he signed for Arsenal, they were looking at him as a, you know, a, a player that could really step up, but he wasn't moving right. That was what reports were saying, that he wasn't moving right. So they needed to re-sort of configure his entire movement, how he how he sprinted, how he sidestepped and all that type of thing. So maybe he'll be back, the partner and Gabriel at centre-half. Um, he completed 109 passes in his last league game. Um, so something that you, you look at Saliba could be that that type of option in there. But the big one, Lekeep, right now, Lincoln Arsenal, with a guy that I think could maybe change their setup and change their system, that, of course, is Uar. Uar is a player that's been of such calibre over the last few seasons. Uh, you think about him playing for, for Lyon in the Champions League last season, of course. Lyon dumped out uh, Man City. When you look at their squad and players, obviously, that uh, should be moving soon, Uar, very much that guy. Uh, very much a player that can dominate a game of football. Um, and it, it's interesting to to kind of look at him as uh, as a guy to step up and be there. You know, he could either fulfil the role in defensive midfield. I had a really good relationship with Undumbele when Undumbele was at Lyon, double pivot in front of the defence, playmaking. Obviously, we've been playing slightly further up. Could have rotation here. Smith Rowe could play maybe wide left if if there wants to be another DM in there. But Uar could anchor the midfield. And if we take a look at his his statistics up against um, Man City in the Champions League last season. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, 10 out of his 17 ground duels won. Completed four out of his six dribbles as well. Uh, one key pass, which of course was the assist for the goal. But really good performance for him and could be a, a good target for Arsenal. Available apparently for £30 million. Elite creator, um, firmly in the 90th plus percentile and expected assist. Dribbles, progressive passes, shot creating actions would be a really nice fit for Arsenal. Uh, you know, one of the, obviously, the, the big things when you were looking at Arsenal is how to fit everyone in. Um, maybe in a sense of other players, obviously, the big one, Hector Bayerin probably needs to leave, probably needs to leave for himself, but also for Arsenal. Tyreek lamty has been massively linked with Arsenal uh, over the, the last few uh, months. He'd be someone that I'd straight away go to Brighton, offer them some cash, instant replacement. But as well, uh, when we're looking at other players, Martinelli's going to have a big future at Arsenal. I think he's got to be someone that they build around. Um, but as well, uh, we're looking at Basuma in a sense, of, of getting him in and around the team. Uh, when you consider Arsenal as a side, maybe looking at Martinelli as the, as the forward, maybe. Um, bringing Basuma into the into the team. Obviously, another signing from Brighton, so he's going to have to fork out a lot of money. That double pivot of Bazuma and Party starts to look good. When you take a look at the Brighton midfielder, he averages 
for tackles plus interceptions per 90 and 2.3 dribbles. That would allow Arsenal to have another very, very mobile uh, number six. Have a double pivot that both could attack and defend. Thinking party, superb in both ways, and also a bit more of a ball player. Um, and Basuma being a bit more of that box to box guy, more of that Angulo Kante. And I generally feel Arsenal, with a few signings, could massively improve their team. We're talking Basuma, we're talking Lamptey, we're talking Awar. That has got the potential to sort Arsenal out. So there you have it, guys. My thoughts on how to fix Arsenal. Get into the comments below and let me know yours, of course. Like that goddamn video, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time.